Good evening, everyone, and welcome to non-volatility, low-volatility trading. Uh, my name is Nenad Kerkes. I am also known as Tarantula. Today is 2nd of July, 2014, and I will show you how to trade with non-volatility or low-volatility. Uh, I am also, I will be also giving you a quick background of me because this is the first time I'm doing webinar for a Forex Street. And just before we start with our webinar, we need to uh, tell you a few things about a risk disclaimer, the risk disclosure statement stating all the possible risks associated with the Forex market. By proceeding further, you're also accepting all risks associated with Forex market. So next part, online educational materials are developed by other markets in Estonia for a global audience. Therefore, please take into consideration that information this session may not be suitable for everyone. To get the corresponding information on charting conditions and any other detail, please visit www.albermarketsglobal.com, select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity. Albert Markets UK LTD takes no responsibility for the information accuracy. The analysis represents the personal opinion of the authority me and in no way it represents the actual suggestion for the trade. These are not MUK's opinions. The website in the video is not a .uk website, but the globalus.com website. Forest is risky business. This is personal opinion only. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. So yeah, uh, the first question I've got is, uh, am I the same tarantula that have a forum on Forex Factor? Yes, I am that guy. The same one, the same tarantula. <laughs> who've been trading uh, full-time since uh, 2008. And I really have a, I can say, a bit of a background in Forex trading. My uh, proprietary method is called Camarilla MACD. That is what I have been uh, trading, what I've been using. It's purely based on price action and very, very few indicators. MACD is my favorite. I'm also running a Spider's Den. That is a well-known trade on Forex Factory. It has more than 3 million of visits. And currently, I think it's more than 3, 3 million to 200,000, but they have removed the counter, so I don't know exact number. Uh, also, I've been doing many... Uh, I've been also managing my trades on many other coins, especially worldwide investment, the Admiral Markets blog, uh, a Serbian local blogs, and so on. Uh, I also work as Admiral Markets Head Lecturer and Analyst. I also, I've been doing that for last uh, year and a half, and I'm really trying to help other traders uh, make uh, money. Also, I am a creator of proprietary price action trading method. As I said, it's called Camarilla MACD. Camarilla MACD is full price action method. It consists of four different modules and it can be traded and used on each single currency. So I don't mind whether I trade Euro, Dollar or Swiss Yen. It's absolutely the same for me. Uh, I've been known as a prefect and real-time an an analyst. I never post any analysis post-fact. That is uh, the biggest thing one analyst can do if he or she wants to help other traders. So always, 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 always has been and always will be prefect and real-time analysis of the market. Uh, I also began writing for Forex Street in June 2014, also behind Admiral Markets. And as I always say, all my results are transparent. If someone wants full Forex education, and from time to time I put it also on my slides when I present them, with Admiral Markets, so uh, I'm not afraid to show my real account statement to everyone who is interested to have a proper education also. That is also a full transparency from my side. So everyone can see that I'm not, I don't, I never talk nonsense. I always stand behind my each single word and sentence. So that was a really quick introduction there is much and always we have a lot of to talk about, but I need to be quick with this so we can talk probably next time. So 
uh, we will talk about volatility and non-volatility, then advantages and disadvantages, how to trade it. I will present you a, a nice little strategy which you can use for uh, low volatility or non-volatility trading. Uh, it's a pretty much simple strategy, but uh, you can try it. And of course, it's free for you. I will show you how you can try to trade on low volatility because you know that low volatility trading is not so advisable, but it can be achieved with a proper method and proper mindset. And I will give you then general tips how to use it and what you should do. So before we begin, this is very important thing uh, because many traders, uh, many traders and mentors will not tell you about these things. Uh, this is a, a tripod of successful trading. Uh, for me and for all of my students and to all people I, I've been teaching all these years, I can say that successful trading is based on a tripod. And I call that a tripod of successful trading. Uh, a very important thing is to know is that a profitable trading strategy is basically a systematic approach based on technical analysis and fundamental analysis. Uh, we cannot have a profitable trading strategy if we don't understand the nature of the market, the concept of the market, and our own method or system. We also need to know a proper money management and a risk management. Money management and risk management, for me, all of these things are very important. I cannot tell you which thing is more important, but I have, I have really come to the, know, to the knowing that risk management or money management is maybe a little bit, a bit more important than other things because proper money management will leave you in Forex market C for many years to come. But to have a proper money management mindset, you need to have a proper trading psychology, a psychology of a real trader. Now, that tripod is based on this thing. If one leg falls, all will fall and everything will crumble down. Everything will fall apart. So to be profitable, you need to have a good and proven, proven method. You need to know about risk management and you need to have a proper mindset. We can also add the element of volatility because mostly guys, uh, you will be trading and I, I presume that you've been trading a Forex market, which is a very volatile, especially if you trade not just majors as I do, but uh, minor crosses or maybe uh, exotic crosses. So uh, I cannot stress you how important to know that market is, Forex market is really volatile. Uh, in contrary to stock market, Forex market can be viewed as a, a airplane. So you're basically running uh, uh, or, or uh, flying an airplane on a marathon. So you want, uh, the market is very fast, but you want to stay in the track for many years to come. And think about it. Without proper tripod, your account will be burned in a matter of days or even months. Six months of successful trading is nothing in Forex market. You need to have a history. You need to have, you need to be profitable year by year. So one month can be good. Next month, maybe you will suffer from a little bit of a drawdown of a loss. But overall, you should be profitable. So trading when market is normally volatile is okay. Trading where market is highly volatile is not recommended, but it can be achieved. It's also for a non-volatile market. 
It's not recommendable. I can say, I need to say that, but it can be achieved. I personally very rarely trade on low volatile markets because I don't have to. I, I, I've been trading 24 pairs. As I said, it's same to me whether I trade uh, CAD Swissy, GBPN, or uh, New Zealand yen, or Euro dollar. I, I don't make any difference between pairs. It, it, everything is the same for me. So I don't need to trade when volatility is low. But maybe some of you want to try it. Uh, some of you maybe want to, to see how it goes when market is volatile, especially if, if you're trading ma uh, major pairs. You know, novice traders, rookie traders, they want to take every single opportunity in forex market. Now, we can discuss that, whether it is good or it's not good. But one thing is for sure. If you want to try it, you will try it on demo account. But uh, it's not so re recommendable. Because low volatility market means usually that the prices m won't move a lot. So basically, you will be risking a bit more than you will be risking in a normal volatile market. But still, you can make pips with it. Now, what, what does it mean when we say volatility? Uh, a standard definition of volatility is the amount of uncertainty or risk involved with the size of changes in a currency exchange rate. I would personally say that is how much a price fluctuates over a period of time. I can illustrate that very easily. Uh, if you see the prices going up like this, in a, on, I don't know, one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, even one hour, that means that volatility is very high. So we are talking about high extreme volatility. If prices are going like this, slowly grinding, making a trend zigzag pattern, we can say that volatility is normal. And when we see the price is going up and down like this, we can say that volatility is indeed low. So for me, the best definition of volatility is how much a price fluctuates over a period of time. So high volatility is fast change of price during short time and slow change of price during short time is low volatility. Now, volatility is usually magnified by the use of leverage. Uh, by introducing uh, forex trading to re retail traders, leverage has been highly used by all of retail traders. And retail traders also add to existing volatility of the forex market. You already know, presumably, you know that uh, forex market is not centralized. That means there is there there isn't a central stock exchange exchange like when we are trading stock market. So because of that, we can we we cannot talk about a volume. In, in forex market. There is no real volume as in stock market. The only volume in forex market is tick volume. Okay? So we are talking about tick volume. So when we when we mention a word volume in forex market, usually it is referred to an entry, volume traded. Volume traded is usually done by leverage with accounts which are less than hundred thousand of dollars, so we need to use the leverage. Now those are basics on forex trading. So retail traders magnify volatility by the use of leverage. Now currency trading, as I said, is not; it doesn't have a centralized part of it, so it will bring a high degree of volatility. Also, minor crosses will usually give a high degree of volatility because minor crosses are not so extensively traded 
as majors. EuroCAD, EuroAudi, GBP3C, and so on. So you need to be very careful when you want or if you want to trade minor crosses, as they will give you certainly a high degree of volatility. Look, just open your charts now and watch, uh, let's say, uh, I, I made an analysis for New Zealand dollar today, 20, 20, 25 pips in a profit, and it was actually a slow grind. I, we, were, we were selling from the right shoulder, if you were watching uh, my analysis on Admiral Markets, Forest Street, and Forest Factory, uh, and basically it's 20, 30 pips. It's okay for day trading. But uh, look at, for example, EuroCAD. <laughs> EuroCAD, how volatile that pair is, really. Uh, while Euro dollar was uh, going up and down, mostly down, but it went up and down, EuroCAD uh, jumped up for some 50 pips. So basically, guys, uh, minor crosses are really, really <laughs> very, very volatile. So always, always, always use the proper money management when you're trading uh, those minor crosses or <laughs> exotic crosses, if you like. It. Now, what causes also volatility? Every day is high impact news. Probably you check, probably I think that you, you'll be checking the calendar each day. High impact news is usually news which are marked as red or as three exclamation marks on Forex Street calendar. So high impact news will cause a volatility in today's market conditions. Uh, today's market conditions are not the same as they were a couple of years ago. Uh, it has changed. I can say, I can say that it, it, it has changed a lot. We won't see a euro dollar drop as we were seeing that a couple of uh, years ago. Well, you need to be prepared for that. That won't happen anytime soon. So we need to trade in the volatile, in a ranging market. And usually when market is waiting for the news, we can say that uh, market is waiting for high impact news. That can be, I don't know, ECP conference, Fed conference, Bank of Japan statements, uh, NFP. ADP is not that strong as it was some time ago, Germany's new economic sentiment, bid rate decisions, and so on. You can check it on Forex Factory, on Forex Street calendar. We check it also on other markets. So you can, you can do it, but you need to do it because you will know when, usually when volatility will arise. Pay attention especially to uh, cable news. Usually after London opens, it's... Um, it's 10.30 my time, Central European time. Usually around that time, GBP news will be released, and that causes a high degree of volatility for GBP crosses, especially GBP dollar, also known as cable. Okay? So high impact news will bring volatility. My advice is either to protect yourself. You should always, of course, protect yourself by using stop loss. That, that I, sh I don't need to mention that that is absolutely a must if you're a serious trader. Uh, or you can exit the position, or there are some strategies which I am, I've been regularly presenting how to enter a retracement, how to add to retracement, even if news is bad, but the trend is good. There are methods which we won't talk about today, but I've been che teaching that also on, on other markets uh, webinars. Rumors can also bring a high volatility to market. Rumors or, I don't know, sort of telltales, you know, which are not confirmed, which have not been confirmed, they can bring extensive volatility to Forex market, especially if that rumor is being presented by important figure or on ACB or Fed. So rumors also pay attention to it, guys, and, I don't know. I, I just don't like when that happens because that doesn't have anything to do with the proper trading or intraday trading. Then geopolitical events. So Ukraine cri crisis 
also adds to volatility now it, it's been coming down but you know that a dollar rubble was very 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 volatile when that started macroeconomical news statements press conferences then we need to to mention of course natural disasters which are also a part of volatility if you remember the japanese earthquake couple of years ago so many many i know many traders from forex factory who almost lost their half of their professional accounts when that earthquake has been has been um, making a huge volatility impacting a huge volatility in forex market so natural disasters are that is something we cannot control, but we can protect ourselves. Remember that you cannot control the nature, but you can adapt to the, to the nature and you can protect yourself. When rain starts to fall, a, hu a heavy rain, usually English and UK says, they say uh, it's raining cats and dogs. Would you go for a walk? Of course you wouldn't. You would be protecting your head, your, your body from from the rain. So also in Forex market, you can protect from all of these high volatility impact possibilities by placing a simple yet effective stop loss. Central bank interventions and of course profit taking. Profit taking is usually done on Friday. The first part of profit taking is usually done on London noon that is the first part of profit taking. When London takes its profits, then at uh, London close and partially at New York close. So usually each Friday we can witness a profit taking. Now, advantages of volatility. In order to make money, volatility should be present. Okay. Now, I'm talking about every everyday trading. Now, of course, because we are talking about low volatility trading, you can make money with low volatility trading. I will present your method. But to, to, to exploit volatility too best, we need a normal volatility, not high and not low. Volatility will give boost to our entry, turning it into a profit soon. Usually, when, when we are positioning ourselves, the price will go on a sideways motion. When we receive and market receives a volatility boost, the price will either go up or down. Well, you know, Bollinger Bands, when they are converging, we know that there is no volatility and no trend. When bands are diverging, there is a start of volatility. If you're a scalper, then I don't need to mention how important volatility is for scalping and for scalp swings. Now you will probably ask yourself, yourselves, what are scalp swings? Scalp swings are my proprietary, again, name for scalps which are not five or six pips, yet for scalps which are 15 to 20 pips in size or 25 pips. That I call scalp swings. Then intraday direct rise or direct fall, for all of you who don't know what means direct rise or direct fall, this is normal trending market. When we have a pullback, when we have a trust, then pullback. Trust, pullback. It's called zigzag, and we can witness that in normal trading conditions. This is direct rise. This is direct fall. When price is rising or falling without making a proper retracement. There is always, always, always caused by volatility. Stop grabbing. Stop grabbing is also causing a volatility. You know what stop grabbers are. When you place a stop, let's say that you are, uh, let's say that you want to go short and you go short from here. Okay. Now, usually your stop is placed above your last swing high for short trades. And when prices, break that stop loss and if crowd is placed 
their stop loss where you have also placed it, that would cause an automatic buy into the market. So each short trade closed is automatic buy into the market. And we have stop triggering and stop grabbing. That also causes a volatility. Momentum trades, breakout trades, guys. Now, I will just mention how breakout trades are done, and you will also get a cue about volatility. Breakout trades. Let's talk about standard, standard triangle trades, breakouts. So you can trade. Let's talk about breakout of symmet this is symmetrical triangle. Okay. So this is breakout. This is retest. If you enter after the break, at the first break of the upper trend line of the triangle, it's called trigger happy trade. If you wait for the retest, of that trend line, it's called breakout retest trade. If you want to make a breakout retest continuation or breakout pullback continuation, you will enter here. This is breakout point, this is retest, this is continuation from this point. So every single breakout of important chart pattern will use some form of volatility. Okay? especially in price action trade. Reverse positions from long to short and vice versa also can be exploited. So if you, let's say, you, you, you want to go short and you can see that your trade is going good, but then at the same time, well, it bang, it started to go up. You can close your trade and enter immediately after the breakout, exploiting trigger happy trade, but again, you're using the volatility for that. You cannot do that if there is no volatility. And I already mentioned breakout trading. So you can do breakout trading with volatility. Forget about trend trades and breakouts if there is no volatility. Disadvantages of volatility. Over trading. Now, over trading is something which usually we've been doing in our Forex career. You should never, never, ever over trade because if the market is going sideways and you want to go with a trend, you won't make any money. You will be over trading, opening a position after position, and most of the time you will be losing, guys. Forget about over trading. Also, if there is big volatility, huge volatility, it can mean whipsaws, price going like this that is very 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 dangerous because you will you will lose the grasp on the forex market on the market you're trading and you will be doing revenge trading once you are you 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 lost your position you immediately double your leverage to make up for that loss forget about that the, those are disadvantages of both big and low volatility Gambling. Forex is not gambling. Forex, Forex is profession as every other profession. And if you want to be successful, you need to treat the profession as a real P-R-O-F-F-E-S-I-O-N. Profession. That's your job, guys. You're not gambling. Forget about people who are telling you that Forrest is gambling. It's not a gamble. We, I can talk about it all day. I don't keep the time, unfortunately. But I can give you a thousand reasons why Forex is not gambling. Swing traders suffer from huge volatility. Swing traders, usually, who keep positions overnight and make the decisions according to the daily chart, are those who suffer from extreme volatility situations. There is not a clear trend. There is a possibility for gaps opening every other day. Stop losses are triggered. And therefore, keeping positions overnight in such extreme situations is very riskier than usual. And you might want to avoid if you're a swing trader until that currency storm fades away. So if... If you insist or to make a swing trade, 
guys use either smaller amounts, smaller entry sizes that you normally would. <laughs> Volatility, on the contrary, is a big, I can say, celebration to intraday traders. So, guys, non-tradable environment can be presented on huge volatility for swing traders. For intraday traders, it's good. Traders who don't trade 20 or more pairs may suffer a lot because usually you will be picking a low volatile market majors. If you remember, I said that miners are more volatile than majors. So on lower volatility, miners can be traded also. Okay? And you should trade it in lower time frames. So lower time frames and not making any swing trades. Okay? Now, how to trade on low volatility? Low volatility trading is achievable. Okay? Low volatility trading is achievable. Forget, guys, about trend trading systems. Forget about it. No trend trading, no swing trading on low volatility. You should be concentrating on scalping low volatility, not trading low volatility. And the proper name should be scalping low volatility. Yeah, it's a form of trading, but we actually scalp it. It's done on lower time frames. It's done in ranging market conditions. And, and usually we should stay away from majors. Okay, we can trade it. I can say we can trade it. Euro, dollar, cable, dollar, Swiss. But you can concentrate on miners. Pick up miners with lower spreads if you trade miners. Don't go with miners that have more than four pip spreads. Low volatility should be one to maximum three pip spread maximum. Forget about adding into retracement. Adding into retracement is something we do on trend conditions. Let's say we want to make a long trade, a long trade, and this is our first entry. Adding into and our stop loss is here. Adding into retracement is valid if you don't move your stop loss. So that's called adding into retracement. Now we can debate it. I don't have much time to explain you that. Maybe another opportunity, adding into losers and adding into retracement, it's completely different. And I can explain you that and give you a proper trading advice, but I don't want. So if you want to go global trading, forget about adding into retracements. We don't do that. Your targets should be reduced Okay, targets should be reduced. Forget about candlestick patterns and candlesticks. It's useless in low volatility ranging market, especially because you will be usually trading with this strategy, you will be trading 15 minute time frame mostly. 15 minute time frame mostly. So forget about candlestick patterns. I can even say that uh, candlestick patterns and uh, those char patterns. I, I don't use a non 15 minute time frame. I'm using that in one hour time frame. And the bigger the time frame is, uh, more uh, successful they are. And one hour time frame is more than enough for proper intraday positioning or counter trend trading. Remember also the chance for pending orders is reduced if you want to go with low volatility trading. So forget about pending orders. Okay. Now, uh, Question from uh, Dur Sangvi. How do we identify whether a market has normal volatility or low volatility? I will show you now. If you're not pricing, I can, I can identify that by just looking at the chart. If I see that the candlesticks are small and the market is ranging, then uh, it's easy to identify. But because uh, I, I, I probably you're all, uh, I don't know, beginner or maybe intermediate forex traders, I will tell you how to identify low uh, volatility by using this ADX, okay? Now, we are, we are going to, I'm going to show you a strategy for low volatility, and this is how you should do it, okay? First of all, guys, open a bar chart. And now, 
try to capture this light because these are the rules for low volatility trading system. First, you need to open a bar chart. So forget about candlesticks. You need to open bar chart. Okay. After that, put ADX of 14 on your MetaTrader 4 chart. So bar chart and ADX 14. Okay. We need to see if market is in congestion phase. We always, on low volatility, we always buy low and sell high. Okay. We always buy low and sell high. We need to identify, so we need to identify congestion phase. So congestion phase, when price is low, means three consecutive down closes or three lower lows, and then we buy the price. Congestion phase, when price is high, three consecutive up closes or three higher highs for a sell trade. We trade it on 15-minute time frame, or we can use higher time frame, but I was testing this on 15-minute time frame. You can trade all pairs with this method, with this system. And very important is ADX. This is most important. ADX should be below 25. So you need to add 25 level on your chart. And ADX should be below 25, unless then it was three bars ago. I will also show you a slide after this, so you will get a picture of what I'm talking about. So long positions are taken when? ADX is below 25 and, and falling, so less than three bars ago. We have three consecutive lower lows, and we buy on the third lower low. Yeah, I will show the charts, of course. ADX also is below 25 and less than three bars ago. Three consecutive higher highs, and we sell on third higher high. So this is the chart. You don't use candles because candles are irrelevant. It's, uh, you can use candles, but uh, to be honest, bar charts are ma more, uh, much easier to identify uh, for uh, be beginner traders. So beginner traders are will easy, e more easily identify uh, lower lows and uh, higher highs than candles. Also, this is much clearer representation for low volatility. I personally, I don't recommend using candlesticks with low volatility trading because it can confuse some traders, especially because candlesticks will be making uh, dojis and stop candles while low volatility is present. It's more easy, it's easier to identify lower lows and higher highs on this low volatility system. So look at this example. So we have three consecutive lower lows, okay? One, two, three. Uh, and look at the ADX. It's been constantly for falling from this point to this point. So at this bar, we buy it. Now it's also easy to identify uh, target price. TP, take profit, target price, target potential is three bars after the entry. One, two, three. One, two, three. So you close your order here, or you can use training stop. Once the third bar has been closed, you can place your stop one pip below it. So effectively, you can use training stop. I've been using training stop extensively on my trading method. Stop loss should be below, in this example, because we are going long below last low. This is most obvious low. And not more than 12 pips, okay? Not more than 12 pips. This is next example. We want to go short. One, two, three, okay? ADX has been falling down. You place your stop here. You enter here, guys. Yes, this is scalping on low volatility. You can only scalp. Stop loss should not be more than 12 pips through not more than 12 pips. So this is all scalping. If you followed me carefully, I've been saying that you cannot do trend trading, you cannot do swing trading with low volatility market. The only possible thing how you can trade it is by scalping. So forget about trend 
Forget about swings, only scalping allowed with low volatility trading. So one, two, three, three consecutive higher highs. Stop loss is placed there. You open your order here. One, two, three. You close your order there. Yeah, trend is indeed our friend. But many people want to know how they can trade on low volatility. And believe me, Boyki, on low volatility, you will be usually losing the money if you are following the trend. I, I usually trade within the trend, but I can make counter trend trades and breakout trades. So I am I'm I'm more of a, I don't care if there is a trend or counter trend or <laughs> I I exploit every single opportunity the market gives me. Really. Uh, there is another story, but if you ask me what I prefer, I prefer a trend because when you trade 24 pairs, it's much easier to trade with the trend than to go with other methods. So trend is indeed our friend. But again, there is a simple trade here at this bar. One, two, three, three consecutive higher highs, stop losses place here, and bang, it went down. Okay? So... Uh, this is the, the system which I uh, was really, and I, I hope that you will be making some use of it. I was really happy to present it. And yeah, if Forex Street invites me, of course, I have a, a lot of knowledge to share with you, really, a vast knowledge. And uh, if you will be listening to me, I can guarantee you that you will change your, uh, if you're losing trader, I can guarantee that you will change your mindset and begin to think differently. Because all things I've been saying and I will be saying are from my personal experience. So I know what to do in order to, <laughs> in order to, in order to show you how to become a profitable trader. Okay. So. Strategy for low volatility. Uh, uh, Drew, we don't have. I cannot show you any real uh, any real trading now. I have three minutes to go, so I will just sharing this last slide with you. Maybe next time, if there will be a time, I I will I will try to manage some 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 things. So use these slides to your advantage. Yeah, please take more webinars. Surely we will see. So exit is on the third bar, closed after the entry. Stop losses place three to four pips above or below last swing high or low. Stop should not be more than 12 pips on 15 minute time frame. And remember this now. Low volatility is usually 1 p.m. GMT. 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. GMT on bank holidays. Then when market is waiting for important news, pre-NFP. And remember, session volatility is not same for each pair. We can talk about euro dollar trading on London and New York cross session, but we cannot talk about uh, euro dollar cable trading while Trading Asian session. Asian session is usually reserved for Audi crosses, Japanese yen crosses, New Zealand crosses, and those commodity currencies. So Audi and Kiwi are Kiwi is New Zealand are commodity currencies. Japanese yen is reserved safe haven. So if you trade Euro dollar, usually there will be a big volatility on euro dollar during uh, London and New York session. Uh, all, generally, there is a big volatility on euro dollar and New York session. But when we get a switch from New York to Asia session, there will be low volatility on cable, Swiss dollar, and more volatile 
New Zealand dollar, yen, and all the pairs, pairs will become. So that is basically what I had in mind uh, for today. So if you have any additional questions, do not hesitate to ask me. Uh, if Forex Street will arrange a next webinar, I will be sure to share with you. I have a lot of interesting subjects, which I was extensively doing on and been extensively doing with Admiral Markets. Yeah, uh, only a quick question that we can uh, finish. Is this only on 15-minute time frame? Yeah, 15-minute uh, time frame is my time frame of choice because of low volatility and because we will be effectively scalping the market. So try it on 15-minute time frame. So thank you guys for your attention. Thank you for listening and trade safe. I'll be with you soon enough, probably. Cheers.